Now we're going to take what we've learned regarding valence and arousal and we're going to put it to the test with a short pose exercise. We're going to go with a low arousal positive valence pose relaxed. The first thing we're going to do is gather our reference. I'm using this here, the dude abides. Now one of the important things to remember with reference is it's just like life drawing classes where it wouldn't make sense for you to go to a life drawing class look at the model and then leave the room and draw out in the hall, right? So with reference, always remember, have the reference with you. Otherwise, it just doesn't serve any purpose. The other thing to remember is we're not just copying the reference. We want to take it to some place further, extend it. That's part of what makes it animation. Animation is reality plus. So let's analyze our reference as well. I'm going to start with silhouette. Posing or solid drawing is a principle of animation, but within that principle are several sub-concepts that make for good posing. And this first one I'm going to talk about is silhouette. That is, if you imagine the character filled in entirely in black, is the pose readable? Does it make sense? Do we still get an idea of what the pose is trying to convey? The second thing I'm going to think about is structure the angles of all the parts of the body, how they're arranged, that three-dimensional look of the character. Then I'm going to think about line of action, and this is a little harder to understand. Essentially, it's the internal forces within the character, how they flow and move. A low arousal pose is going to be characterized by those curving lines of action affected heavily by gravity. Positive valence pose is also going to have those soft curving lines. I'm also going to think about flow lines. And this is a sub-principle of posing that talks about where we want our audience looking and how the contours of the character can guide our eye to the thing we want our audience paying attention to. In this case, the smiling, relaxed face of the character. Finally, I'm going to consider exaggeration. How can I take this pose and extend the physicality so it more broadly conveys the idea? Uh, perhaps it's strengthening the line of action through the torso, sinking him down lower into the couch, tilting that head even further back. So some of the sort of more subtle notes of this pose, the kind of smug self-confidence, the subtle arrogance, the way the character owns the space. And that all depends on sort of what message I'm going for. So now that I've analyzed the reference and I have a good bead on what it is I want to accomplish with it, we're going to move into Maya and take this reference and get it lined up. I'm going to put that reference on an image plane. So I'm going to go Create, Free Image Plane, and I'm going to click on the option box. And a nice little trick that uh, I'm going to share with you. The image that I'm sourcing is 1920 by 1040. So I'm going to make sure that my width and my height correspond to that. So I'm going to go 1920 by 10.4. Apply. And now if I go Show Image Planes, You'll see it down there in the corner. I'm going to scale this up a little bit bigger so I can see it more clearly. Because this is a free image plane, it's not attached to any camera, which means I can position it and move it wherever I want in the scene. Now, there's nothing on it, so I'm going to go here to the attribute editor of this image plane. I'm going to scroll down here where it says image name. I'm going to navigate to my image. I've got it here in images. The dude open. So there's my reference. That way I can tuck it off to the side and constantly have it to refer to. Now let's start with that first sub-principle of posing that I was talking about. Silhouette. The idea of the pose being readable if it were filled in just as an outline. Can we still get the idea of the pose? I need to make sure that I know where my audience is before I can figure out if the silhouette is working. So the first thing I do before I even touch my character is I'm going to go Panel Perspective New. And I'm going to create a camera and call it Shot Cam. And this is where my audience is going to be looking from. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I turn on image planes there. Good. And I'm going to position it relative to my character so that it shows the composition. I'm going to turn on my resolution gate here. I'm going to position it so it's framed roughly speaking on my character, the way I'd like it to show up. About that close to him. And then I'm going to go View, Select Camera, and I'm going to lock all those channels. That way I can't accidentally move my camera. Now I want to be able to pose my character and still see this shot camera, so I'm going to go Panel, 
tear off copy. And now I've got a little miniature version of the camera here that I can refer to. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off curves, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off image planes. And in fact, I'm going to hit 7 for render with all lights. You'll see my character actually shows up all black because I have no lights in the scene. This way I can actually see what my silhouette looks like from my shot camera. I'm just going to take this and make it a little smaller and tuck it off to the side so I can refer to it. So let's go back to our interactive camera perspective here. So I can pan around and I'm just going to grab this image plane and just move it out of the way. So it's sort of there. I can look at it. Now, with posing, I want to make sure that I use an efficient workflow. And there are a couple little tricks we can do to make sure that happens. The first that I find very helpful is I'm going to go ahead and key all the pantomime controls. That is the core character controls, not the face or the fingers or anything like that, but just the main body controls. I'm going to start with the root of the character, flow my weight through down the feet and to the knees, and then move from the thing that has the biggest impact to the thing that has the smallest impact. That means flowing my way out through the core of the character down to the extremities. It's important to note that this is a first pass key pose, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get the character roughly into that shape that approximates the pose. And then once I've done the body, I'm going to go to the hands and the face. So let's start with the root of our character, and I'm going to pay attention to sort of the angle that the body is at. I'm going to lower him down here and rotate him. And you'll note, I'm not grabbing individual channels here like this. I find that tends to make for stiff posing. Instead, I'm going to click in the middle here and move the character around. I'm going to make sure that my rotation mode is set to object rather than gimbal or world, because I want to see it moving relative to the object. So I'm going to go ahead and angle his pelvis to match roughly what I think the pelvis is doing in this reference. Once I've got that, I'm going to go down to the feet, and I'm going to position them as well. So let's get this pelvis just a little bit lower. And again, I'm not clicking on individual channels here. I'm just moving it perpendicular to my camera. Grab this foot, and this one is sort of underneath. You'll note that there's this little plane here that I can move the foot just along the X and Z without moving it up and down as well, because I don't want to sink it into the floor. Then I'm going to grab this other foot, lift it up, cross it over the leg like so, thinking about the angle. I can't see his foot here, but I'm going to guess that it's sort of dipping down like this. And then I'm going to grab those two feet together and just move them sort of centered on the body like that. Looking at the reference, it looks like the flow of the torso of the feet are kind of in line with that. So I'm going to match that like this. Now let's see, this knee back a little bit this way. Pull this foot in a little bit closer and higher. Grab that knee up a little bit more. And grab this foot and just rotate it out a little bit like that. Pull that foot in a little bit closer and then drop that knee so it's nice in contact there. Let's see the angle of that shin I want to match. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to pull that foot out just a little bit. And I'm constantly referring to my shot camera over here just to see is it starting to feel like it aligns with what's going on here. And you can see that knee's kind of low. So I'm going to go ahead, pull this foot in a little bit higher and closer, like this. Let's see, angle that pelvis just a little bit more. There we go. Now I also have to account for the fact that the proportions of my 3D character may be slightly different than the actor for whom I'm drawing the reference from. So I'm going to have to adapt what I'm doing based on that. Grab this foot, pull it out just a little bit more. While I'm working, it's always a good idea to turn off the things that I don't actually want to deal with. That way when I click I'm only selecting the character's controllers. Pull that foot out a little bit more. Match that angle there. Pull this foot out a little bit more. There we go. 
All right. Now I'm going to work up through the torso. I'm going to use my selection tools here to speed up the process. Go ahead, set namespace, and I can grab one, two, three, those FK controls together. I'm going to bend the body up until it matches sort of the curve of his torso there. I'm going to open him out. Think about the angle of the chest. I'm going to grab that pelvis and move it even more down. I'm trying to match that curve, that line of action that he's got there. Grab my image plane and just bring it here so I can see it more clearly. There we go. Thinking about that curve. And I'm trying to get something a little more exaggerated. So I'm going to grab these guys, pull them down a little bit. Now that I've got the torso worked out, I'm going to go to the head and the neck. And you'll notice I tend to pose these controls together as a group. I take that neck, tilt it over, head, angle it back. Whoops, not you, silly. Angle it back a little bit more. And now I'm going to flow through the arms. So I'm going to grab the shoulder and lift it up a bit. And your preference, whether you work with FK or IK, it's entirely up to you. For some things, it's a little easier to work with IK or FK, for example, whenever the hands are in contact with the body. So for posing this arm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch him to IK mode. So that's a little easier to pose. So I'm going to go here, left arm to IK. Grab him, pull him across. And if you've copied my shelves and my preference, you will have these tools yourself. Just grab this hand, it's sort of lying down on the hip here, like that. Grab that elbow pull vector and pull it out and up a little bit, like that. The hand is resting, relax. That low arousal pose, those draping, curving lines, gravity having a big effect, it's a huge part of it. So I want to make sure I have that sort of slack laziness. I'm going to grab the shoulder, drop it down here, like that that line across the shoulders that he's got. Now one of the challenges I'm facing here is my character isn't clothed whereas he is. So there's going to be some slight differences. This arm, however, I've got a really specific shape that I want to get. So I'm just going to pose it in F case. So I'm going to grab this arm up here. Imagine it draped across the back of the couch. Grab this guy here. Angle it out. And part of that exaggeration, I want that hand to look more limp, more relaxed. So I'm going to tilt it like that. Now by default, you can see my Morphe hands were already in a relaxed pose from these shelf poses that I have here. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep that relaxed pose for now. Let's go back to our shot camera and see what that line of action looks like from my audience's view. And there we go. A simple first pass body pose matching my reference. Let's go ahead and turn off the silhouette here so I can see it. I can see more of this side of his face. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to rotate that face a little bit more like that. And last little touch here. Grab those eye controls there. Going into my shot camera. Go ahead and get that same angle where he's looking sort of the corner of field of view like that. Let's look at my reference here. I'm going to go ahead and drop the angle of that arm a little bit here because I want to get that curving line down. Rotate it out like this so the elbow sort of sinking into the couch a little bit. Exaggerating that spread out line of action that he's got there. So let's see. So turn on image planes for just a second, actually. I'm going to go like this. 
panel perspective shot cam. Let me grab my reference here and just pull it into view so I can sort of see the two poses together. See if they're catching the same spirit. Camera angle's slightly different. It looks like his arm is sort of coming down towards us. And that's a first pass key pose, and that's the idea. You want to flow through quickly, get the character into that position, and just replicate the, the spirit, the mood of the pose as best you can, thinking about those elements that we had talked about. So to recap, when we're posing, we're going to think about silhouette. We're going to think about the structure of the pose, the angles that all the parts of the body are at. We're going to think about line of action. We're going to think about those flow lines, how they guide the audience eye. And we're going to look for opportunities for exaggeration. These are some of the sub-principles of posing, but they're not, it's not all of them. But these are some of the key ones that I think about. When we're in Maya, we're going to make sure that we create a shot camera so we know where our audience is. As we pose our character, we're going to start at the root and then go down to the feet and the knees and then flow our way up through the torso to the head and the neck, the shoulders out through the arms to the hands. And the idea is to manipulate the things that have the biggest impact first and those things that have the smallest impact last. Don't forget, of course, you want to grab all your blocking controls and key them so you preserve that pose. So let's make sure that we always have our image plane in there with our reference so we can refer to it and see if we're following the spirit of the pose, capturing the mood that we're after. Now when it comes time to do a second pass key pose, the workflow remains the same. We grab all those blocking controls, we just move one frame over and hit S to key. And now I'm going to do a revised version of this pose, trying to improve the qualities that I'm going after and tighten up my uh, match to the reference, the exaggeration, for example, I want to get that curve lower to the couch, get a tighter line in here. I want to have that character look more slack, more relaxed, more smug. So let's see if I can do that. I'm going to go ahead and just create a couple of surfaces so I can interact with them. There we go, just so I've got something that actually gives me a surface to perform with. So I want to get them tighter into that corner, more sinking into the couch. So, second pass key pose. I've grabbed all my blocking controls and keyed them. And as always, just with first pass key pose, I'm going to start with the root of the character. So I'm going to grab that root. I'm going to rotate it down more. See if I can get them tighter into that corner of the couch. There we go. Grab those feet next, just like I did before. Grab the root first, then the feet. I'm going to grab those feet and see if I get more of a flow like that away from perspective. I'm going to grab this foot here, pull it up just a little bit tighter. See if I can get that match to that angle. Have that foot facing towards camera a little bit more. Looking at his leg there, feels like he might be doing something like this with the leg where the foot is sort of on edge on the ground. Let's make sure his feet are on the ground here. Got a levitating couch here. Grab that knee pull vector and pull that intersection out. Okay. That's a little better in terms of the lower part of the body. Now let's go ahead, back up to my selection tools here. I'm going to grab the lumbar spine, just rotate it up a teensy bit. Grab the mid spine. chest, open them up a little bit more, grab that shoulder, pull it up out of the couch a little bit, 
try and extend that arm just a little bit more like that upper arm more like that I'm going to exaggerate that drop down on the wrist even more I think it makes him look like a total slacker take this shoulder open it up away from us a bit more take this hand pull it up tighter into the hip like that pull it out like that there we go just looking at my reference I'm going to sink the head down into the body just a little bit tilt the chin up just a little bit more so he just looks a little more smug. Let's look at our shot camera see if that's starting to get more of the quality than I'm after. It's a lot of gap here so if I hit 7 on the silhouette um, although let's hide our coach there. Hang on a sec. I'm going to grab my coach here add it to a display layer so I can toggle it on and off easy. I'm just going to call that couch. Save. So now when I'm checking my silhouette I can toggle that couch off and hit send for silhouette. Yeah, so I want to close up that gap in the elbow. So I'm going to go like this, grab that pull vector here, see if I can pull him down a little tighter. Intersection on the forearm's getting a little tight so let's Pull it up just a teensy bit. Swing that hand out just a little bit more. I want to make sure that the angles on my wrists don't look broken or awkward. Pull that hand out a little bit more. And now let's see. Show none. Show polygons. Seven for silhouette. Yeah, that's tightened it up a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab all my pantomime controls, S to key, and now I can just step back and forth from one pose to the other and see, okay, before, after, before, after. It's got that stronger curve here through the spine that I was looking for. So yeah, my second pass key pose I feel is working more successfully, getting more of the spirit, that head a little closer to the body. Might have gone a little too far on the angle of the head. I'm going to pull it up just a touch. Let's see. Interactivity is a bit of a problem in my hair. Turn him away just a little bit more. Tilt the head back just a little bit more. Let's see. There. The silhouette on that arm is a little difficult to read. So I'm just going to go ahead and improve that slightly. And I'm going to keep my shot cam here so you can see as I make that change what it is I'm doing. So I'm going to go panel perspective. Just go back to my interactive camera for a second. Got this hand here. I'm just going to pull it in closer to the hip like that and pull the elbow out a little bit so we can see there a bit more of that shape. It's important to note silhouette is not just about the outside contour of the character, but also the parts of the body that are silhouetted on top of the character. So now we have our second pass key pose. So if I grab all my blocking controls, key it there, go like that. I have before and after. Let me grab that eye line and fix that based on my head angle here. getting a little buried so I'm gonna pull that out there we go so there we have before after and that's looking a little more smug a little more relaxed all of the notes and nuance that I wanted from that pose there the dude abides so to recap what we've learned we want to make sure we gather reference and have it with us 
we want to make sure we analyze that reference and make sure that we're extending it to get something better than just reality. While we're posing the character, we're going to consider silhouette, structure, line of action, flow lines, exaggeration. When we're in Maya, we're going to make sure that we have that image plane in the scene with us. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we create a shot camera so we know where our audience is. And once we get to posing, we're going to follow a particular workflow to be as quick and as efficient as possible. We start by keying all the pantomime controls. We start with the root of the character. We flow to the feet and then up through the torso, head and neck, and out through the arms and hands. When it comes time for a second pass key pose, we follow the same workflow. We make sure that we key everything on the first frame and just step one frame over and put it right beside so we can compare before and after. If you follow this workflow, you'll find that your key posing goes smoothly and efficiently and you're able to effectively create the impression you're going for.